the love affair with the streetcar was never completely extinguished in Portland. The fact that Portland, a century ago, was largely defined by the streetcar lines. There are a lot of firsts about Portland. We can be proud of our transit history. We were the largest system on the entire West Coast in, in 1891, and we also manufactured the first streetcars on the West Coast. We did a lot of things that were right on the cutting edge, right in the vanguard of the technology. Today, we have come back to that role again where we're expanding lines, we're building streetcars. What's old is new again. Having a modern streetcar uh, worked into the urban fabric with modern equipment was new. It was a bit of an experiment. Portland is a city of many modes. We reintroduced uh, the streetcar into a mix of autos and buses and light rail and pedestrians and bicycles. It, and it is one of the challenges of the project is to how do you accommodate all those modes. When you introduce something of the scale of a streetcar, you're going to change the street, you're going to change how the street gets used, you're going to have an impact. And it's part of a model for these projects is that having people who are advocates for the community play a critical role, help give it credibility, help smooth its transition, made it better because these people really did invest a lot of themselves. We had very engaged, very committed board members. It wasn't just something you put on your resume and say, oh, I was on a board. These people were very, very active in further advancing streetcar. It was about building a consensus that in fact this infrastructure could connect communities, could, could uh, connect neighborhoods, and it felt, people felt that they had been engaged in the process. We had to provide the best communication that we could possibly do because these constituents along the alignment would be our future sponsors and our future riders. So we wanted to create a sense of ownership and I believe we did that. Neither the streetcar nor the TriMet system would be as strong without the other. And working together, they've really become, I think, a very strong transit system. I have over the years sat with uh, a number of business owners uh, that had concerns about a streetcar line going right in front of their business or a streetcar station, you know, opening up near their business, worried about its impact on their business in a negative way. And I'll never forget Michael Powell hadn't asked a question yet and he looked at the team and he said, so I own a business along the alignment. I read an article in the Oregonian saying there were some guys talking about putting a streetcar up and down 10th and 11th, and I thought, I better figure out what's going on here. He said, how long are you going to be out on the, in front of my, my, off, my site? And so I countered back and said, so you mean from the beginning to the end? He goes, no, how long can I expect the heavy construction, you know, the real disturbance happen in front of my office? And I said, it should take about three weeks. I would sit down with these uh, property owners, kind of curmudgeonly group, um, and say, go to the beach for a week. When you come back, the project will be done and uh, your property will be worth twice what it was the day you went to the beach. But we didn't give up on the thought that we promised to do the work in three, three blocks in three weeks. The way we accomplished that was really a game changer for the industry. I said afterwards, I made good on one promise, failed on the other. We did get it done in a week. Yet the property values didn't go up twice, they went up closer to four times. Almost every single one of those business owners that I check in with since Streetcar opened have said it has been a net positive and in many cases a big, big positive for them and their business. We uh, developed the what we called the Pac-Man approach, which was a small bite uh, of extensions rather than a large uh, added extension or a large project. So it was around 10 to 20 million dollars a bite and we would get it another half mile. So we kept doing half mile extensions every year to two years, um, eating up more of the space and finally ended up with a four mile line down to South Waterfront. It was just uncanny how many times the design challenges came down to inches. We had to thread a needle essentially. We had a matter of, of six inches to play with to, 
to fit the structure and the rails and the overhead power lines and, and, uh, and just made that squeak through and, and um, it's just uncanny how, how many times the, these design challenges come down to holding your breath and, and, and finding those couple inches to, to make it all work. I want to underscore the great City of Portland staff in the Bureau of Transportation that I worked with um, on you know this very aggressive expansion of the streetcar system from four miles to over 17 miles. Transportation is an input, not an output. The output is, an in, is, it, is a better economy. The streetcar really unites neighborhoods and business communities and allows uh, for the development because it tells everybody what's gonna happen. We started building our first building and thought, can we build 50 units down here? And will anybody come? And what are they buying into? So we had to tell a story of trust us, trust the developer. There will be parks, there will be density eventually here, retail, shopping, great places to go and eat. And there will be a way for you to get around so you may not even need your car as you move into this neighborhood. Streetcar is a fantastic return on investment. Portland Streetcar has been a great way to get more private and other investment in the central city. For the $250 million that has been spent on streetcar, it has leveraged $4.5 billion in other investments. The thing I'm most proud of in running the sponsorship program is that a good majority of the current sponsors that we have today that are long-term from 2001 are still our sponsors, particularly the cars. We went to Europe to try to find vehicles for the first phase. And in a famous, among us anyway, incident, um, we were feeling a little small. We were in the, I believe, Siemens plant in Dusseldorf where they were completing a $300 million order for the German national rail system. And we just wanted to buy three streetcars, please. And John, in a moment of humility, turned to Thomas and said, how do you say Bush League in German? <laughs> Thomas answered, I guess that would be Dorfklasse. <laughs> well, Dorfklasse no more. Portland now has a Ringstrasse, and uh, that's a pretty good idea. Close the loop, which is sort of the final piece to all of the, what we've done over the last 20 years, which is the opening of the Tillicum Bridge. We have light rail going out to Milwaukee. We've got streetcar crossing the river, finally, at the Tillicum Crossing. Just an incredibly exciting time for Portlanders. We're, we're standing at the west end right now, the Tillicum Crossing. It's called the Bridge of the People. And needless to say, a lot of those people are going to be riding streetcar when they cross this bridge. And we're very proud of that. I think one of the biggest challenges is, is we have a legacy here. And, I, and I, our generation has a responsibility to keep this legacy continuing. Just because the loop is closed and this 30-year vision is complete doesn't mean we're, we're done. There have to be other things going on. Streetcar needs to continue to be relevant. And so I think the challenge for us is to, is to keep this going. People are getting things done around the country and there's no reason why Portland can't continue to be a leader in this department. We're not done. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do. In the next 20 years, we're gonna add something on the order of 400,000 people to this region, 260,000 jobs. That's four Hillsboroughs. I think part of that ultimately is going to require additional streetcar connections and services. I'm not daunted. I know that the need is there and I know ultimately the support will be there too as we work with our constituents. So this is a big day payday for Portlanders. This is a big payday for the region and our commitment to transportation choices and it's a big payday for the quality of life in our central city. So bravo to all of you who've made this happen. More yet to do. We are not done building streetcar lines in Portland that will serve more neighborhoods and reach more people and open more possibilities for our citizens to get around town. We're not done.